Oh, let us try this again. Okay, so hey, welcome to the broadcast. My name is Tabitha Pittman, Prophetess Tabitha Pittman. I am so excited to be here with you tonight. This is going to be great. First, I'm excited to be here because I am almost to a thousand subscribers. And so that is so exciting for me. So, so exciting. So here's the deal. Tonight, we are going to talk about the power of the decree, the power of the decree. It is uber important that we know how to command the word of God. It is so important that we know how to command the word of God over our lives, over our family, over our children, over our marriage, um, over the relationships, the family, the career, the finances. This is important. This is epic. God wants us to know how to do these things and to do them in his timing and in his way. So I want to just give us a little bit of background. Do you know the power of the decree? Do you know the power of the decree? It's more powerful than you could ever imagine. The decree is something that comes down from heaven, right? And so with that being said, this is God's desire for our life. It's critical that we apply his word to our lives. As Christians, we have a huge uh, impact, right? And we have a huge advantage over all of these other things. We have a huge advantage over them um, for taking the Bible and its instructions and using it for our good, but for God's glory. Hallelujah. Most of us were never taught how to actually create tangible change by using the word of God. But I'm here to tell you today that the Bible is filled with ways that we can use this tangible change to make a difference in the world. Hallelujah. But most of all, to make a difference in our lives. I want to let you know this. The more scripture, the more Bible you have inside of you, the more immovable and unshakable you become. The more immovable and unshakable you become. Hallelujah. This is the good news. This is the good news. Why do I say that? Why do I say that? This is good news because the Bible, the more you read it, the more you consume it, the more it gets in you. Hallelujah. The more it gets in you. And this is why it is critical that we are able to unlock the word of God for our life. Hallelujah. We're able to unlock the word of God. So what I want you to do tonight is grab your pens and your papers and literally share this broadcast out. Subscribe. Tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Subscribe to the channel. Press the bell notification at the bottom of the screen so that whenever I go live, you are able to access it, right? And you're able to glean from the teachings, from the preachings, the prophesying, whatever it is that the Lord puts on my heart to give to you in this hour. So tonight we're going to talk about the power of the decree, prophetic decrees and declarations to unlock blessings in your life. Hallelujah. This is not the, you know, this isn't one of those things where we can say, oh, you know, well, I just know how to do that because most of us, truth be told, don't know how to decree the word of God over our lives. But the Bible can indeed change your physical life. It can change your physical life. It can change your physical world. And I'm not just talking from like a quantum physics perspective, right? A quantum physics perspective. I'm talking about real life, tangible change, right? The vibrations, the energy that words have. The Bible teaches us that the power of life and death is what? You can type it in this uh, comments there, but the power of life and death is in the tongue. That's right. It's in the tongue. And so after all, what we do know is that God spoke, right? And the heavens and the earth were created. He spoke and that's all it took was his word, his word. And so that means that we abide in Christ and Christ abides in us. And so we have the power to do the same thing, meaning the words we speak have the power to create. You can create your world. You can reshape your destiny. Hallelujah. And so it's time to be intentional. Be intentional about what you're saying. Be intentional about the the chatter in your head, right? Because you are the voice that you hear most often. You're the voice that you hear most often. So what we want to create is speaking the promises of God over our life, right? It's not enough to just say, yes, I have faith. 
you activate that faith by getting in situations, right? As life comes at you and you declare the word of God over your life. When things get trying in your finances, you declare, I have abundance according to Deuteronomy 8 and 18, for it is remember your God, for it is he who is giving you the power to get wealth, hallelujah, so that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers as it is this day, right? You declare the word of God over that, substituting your name even. That's how we change our world with the power of the living word, hallelujah. And when we realize that the word can physically change our reality, it entirely changes the whole perspective on it. I want you to get in that mindset where you are embracing the word of God and the fact that it can change everything just like that. I want everything I believe to be so backed by the scripture, so backed by the word of God, hallelujah, the dunamis power of God. I want it to be so backed by the ecclesia of God that it Nothing else matters. I'm unshakable in my faith. I'm unmovable. I will not be moved, right? Basically, I want all my thoughts to be aligned. This is what it's about so that we can get our mind and our thoughts aligned to the word of God, right? So this is the power of words, the power of words. Words create life or death, right? This is why everything you say, everything you speak over yourself, right? If you say that you're fat, guess what? You'll eventually be a self-prophecy, right? It'll come fulfilled. Hallelujah. It's it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's a a self-sabotage is really what it is. Hallelujah. But you'll, it will come to pass. But if you say I'm rich, I'm a millionaire, I'm wealthy, I'm a good steward over everything the Lord has blessed me with. That's when you start really activating your faith and applying it to the word of God. So we do this all the time without even thinking about it, right? Because our thoughts will be, oh, you know what? I'm ready for marriage. You know what? I, I, I think that I'm ready to go back to school. Maybe I'll finish my doctorate. Maybe I'll finish my graduate degree. What? And you start telling yourself that, right? And so your words, your words, they have power and they activate something in you. And so however it is, I always say that whatever you say it is, is what it's going to be. So why wouldn't we change? Why wouldn't we opt to say that it's something good? That's all I want to know. I don't, you know, I don't like the word uh, spell, but I want to say that the world has been able to pervert the declaration. They've been able to pervert the decrees. They've been able to basically manipulate it and use it for their good. Uh, Y'all think about the occult. Think about the the witchcraft and things of that nature. They understand the power of their words. They understand the power of their words. This is why you have the occult and how they've taken biblical principles and changed them and, and made it just work for them, right? And so we know that God's principles don't change, right? So if we would just apply them, that's the key, right? So we have to apply them. And so this is what they know. Words spoken by God change our life. If we can just get in alignment, get in agreement, how can two walk together except they have agreement? Exactly. Except they have agreement. They have to have alignment. They have to come into agreement on the same thing. And this is what God wants us to do. When God said that scripture, he was actually referring to us and him. Oh, come on, y'all. He was referring to us and him. He wasn't referring to any of the other stuff, right? He, we use it today for, for couples and marriage and even with work situations, right? Depending on your work setting, you can walk with a friend and have agreement, right? We can apply it to all kinds of things, but God wants us to be in agreement with him. And then we can we can go forth and one can chase a thousand, two can chase 10,000, 10,000. They have agreement. It is the power of agreement. So this is what the word says about what you speak. A fool's mouth is his destruction and his lips are the snare of his soul. Meaning you can talk, you can do a whole bunch of this, but guess what? It will get you in trouble. It's wise to to keep your lips sealed tight, right? You speak when you have something to say. Hallelujah. A man shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips. Hallelujah. Shall he be filled? 
death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat its fruit. That's Proverbs 18, 20. I want y'all to know that they that love it will eat its fruit. And so doesn't it behoove us to speak good? Doesn't it behoove us to want to say, you know what? I'm going to edify my life by speaking the word. I'm going to put Bible on this. And so the tongue is already a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members. That's what it teaches us in James 3. Uh, Proverbs, I love Proverbs because it's always talking about the word of God and how we can really apply it and get it into our sha na na. It says, whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. Glory to God. I create the fruit of the lips. That's what God said in Isaiah 57 and death and life. This is the one is in the power of the tongue and pleasant words are like a honeycomb. So why don't we choose to make our words sweet, y'all sweet to the being and healing to the bones. So I'm going to get to the meat of this thing, y'all. What is a decree? What is a decree? I sent the uh, decree and a declaration out to my prophetic uh, training team today. And I, I shared with the ladies that God was releasing supernatural abundance into the earth realm. If we we would just lock on, latch on even to his decree. He wants to do it. He said it in the heavens. Hallelujah. If we would just confess with our mouth, yes, God, we can create the declarations that come into agreement with the decree. So let me tell you what a decree is. A decree is an official order issued by a legal authority. Hallelujah. It's a legal order issued by a legal authority. So I want you to know that God operates in legality, right? So everything that we have in the earth realm, it mimics heaven, right? So there's a giant court going on in the spiritual realm, right? We know that Satan is the adversary. He's constantly accusing the brethren in the courts, right? We know that. And God is the judge. He's sitting there. He's, he's taking notes, right? He's the one who's passing down the decree. Think just like when the, when the judge in the physical, the natural realm, pounds the gavel. This is the same thing. God said, I decree whatever his will is, if we can just come into alignment with the will of God, shake it a little side, we will be more powerful than we even know. Yes, Lord. So what the Lord wants is for us to really speak out his heart. A decree is taking God's words and speaking it. Speak it. God told me that our blessings are voice activated. So we have to say it out loud. It's not enough just to get a piece of paper and read. You need to say it out loud. You need your own ear to hear it. It needs to resonate within your spirit. Hallelujah. This is why faith comes by hearing. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. And hearing by the word of God. That's right. And so we have been given the authority from Jesus to make these decrees into our realm. Hallelujah. Look, this is a good place to subscribe, to share, um, like, Turn on the bell for notifications. This is about to get real good, y'all. Um, I'm going to tell you that if you're interested, please take down some notes or catch the replay, but share this with your friends and family because it's going to bless them indeed. Hallelujah. And so Jesus released us to have this influence over our own world, right? So we have this power. We have this authority to speak. And if we would just do that, we can create the will of God in the earth realm. We can pull it down from the spiritual realm and manifest it in the earth realm. Hallelujah. So this is how we do it. We speak scriptures out loud, right? Thou shalt also decree a thing and it shall be established unto thee and the light shall shine upon thee. That was Job 22 and 28. This is where you see Dr. Cindy Trim, a lot of uh, prophetic Uh, voices in the general capacity, right? They are out here and they're saying, blessings, Mama Gwen, good to see you. Um, This is where they're saying things like this, right? They're saying, ah, I command your morning. They're, They're telling us, they're pulling it straight from Job, right? And she has books and books on top of declarations and decrees, right? Where she's pulling it down from what God wants to happen in the earth realm. Hallelujah. That's straight from Job 22, 28. Next, God confirms the word of his servant. God confirms the word of his servant. That's Isaiah 44 and 26. 
Isaiah 55 and 11, you guys, this is a popular passage, right? We know this one pretty well. My word shall not return void, but accomplish all is sent forth to do. See, this is God. He's, he's throwing his weight around for y'all tonight. Hallelujah. I want you to know that God is throwing his weight around for you. See, he, he would have me to get on a live. I just happened to press the button and it, I don't normally have access to go live directly. But now that God has opened up a door, hallelujah, he's opened up a portal. It is time for us to go forth. It is time for us to be great. Don't you sit back one more day but come off a mute come off unmuzzle hallelujah don't you let the devil keep you hiding your light up under a bushel it's time to come out well bless the lord you his angels who excel in strength who do his word who do his what who do his word they do his word that means that they live their life manifesting the word of god they do his word, heeding the voice of his word, according to Psalms 103 and 20. So what do decrees do, y'all? You, I done got all excited over here. This is what decrees do. Decrees create and make changes in the spiritual and natural world. Scripture is powerful. And so we really have to latch on to this. Scripture is so powerful that it creates change in both the spiritual realm and the natural realm. That's how powerful the word of God is. And as you decree God's word over your life, the awesome power of the Holy Spirit is released to bring it to pass. It's released to bring it to pass. Oh, ha! I release the Holy Spirit to bring whatever it is that you've been praying for to pass. Bring it to pass, Holy Spirit. That's how you have to speak the decrees of the Lord. It releases it to bring it to pass. All you got to do is stand on the word. Stand on the word, saints. Stand on the word. Jesus said the words that we speak are spirit and they are life. Life. You can change your whole life by speaking the word of God. Speak the word. The substance of our word goes into the spiritual realm and it starts to create life. It starts to create life. This is why we got to know the power of the decree. Listen, I want you to know this. My word shall not return void, but to accomplish all that's sent forth to do. When you say that, when you say it just like that, God was speaking through you through his word. My word, Tabitha's word, shall not return void, but it shall go forth to accomplish all that it's sent forth to do. Now, if you think about it in first person, imagine what that is like, right? Because our words have power. The power of life and death, again, is in the tongue. And this is why the decree is so powerful. Number two, decrees release and commission angels. They release and commission angels. This is why Psalms 103 and 20 says this, bless the Lord, you his angels who do his word, right? So if we speak the word, the angels will grab it. And I tell y'all all the time, they move faster than light. Y'all know how quick we can turn on a light switch. They move faster than that. They gonna take the word. When you speak it, they grab it because they know that's an assignment. Some of y'all need to get your angels up off of the uh, unemployment line. Hallelujah. And give them an assignment by speaking the word of God. This is what we are commissioned to do. We will no longer be saints who will stand by, who will be passive. We will no longer be saints. Hallelujah. Who will be lazy, lackadaisical. Hallelujah. Nonchalant. Hallelujah. With the word of God. God, mighty God. Angels respond to the words of life spoken by us. They respond and when, when they speak God's promises and hope into our situation, all we have to do is speak his promises, speak his hope. Hallelujah. That's how it's done, y'all. We give these angelic beings work. Oh, I love getting my, look, they, they won't be sitting there following their nails on my watch. Hallelujah. I give my angels assignments. Angel armies go forth and heal. Angel armies set free the captives. Angel armies uh, break uh, yokes over finances. Angel armies break shyness off of the people. Angel armies, hallelujah, I activate you by the word of God. Yes, Lord. The moment you decree a thing, it will dispatch angels and bring fulfillment to that word. Woo, y'all, look, God wants us to know it's voice activated. It's voice activated. All we have to do is say it. 
say it. Just say the word, speak the word, speak the word of the Lord. They obey his voice. They obey his word. When you speak his word, angels are being sent out on your behalf to carry out the mission, to carry out the mission. Whether you see a change immediately or not, they're on assignment. Speaking his word will always, always. Somebody, y'all can put that in the top comments. That's good to me right there. Always. Every time you speak his word, it will always do what it's sent to do. It will always do something. Always. I don't care what it looks like in the natural. Let me tell you, the Bible teaches us that clapping our hands, hallelujah, is good. It will put the enemy, it confuses the enemy. Let me tell you, speak the word, speak the word. One of the most powerful things you can do to transform your life is to speak and decree scripture. Speak and decree scripture into whatever area of life that you are struggling with the most. If it's your marriage, if it's your children, if it's your health, if it's your finances, whatever it is, speak the word. Maybe somebody is dealing with anger. Speak the word. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Uh, the power of life and death, right, is in my tongue, Lord. And so I know that anger rests in the bosom of fools. Lord, I don't want to be a fool. Lord, help me to be wise. Lord, give me the words and the wisdom. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you have heard that a million times. I know, I know. But if you only knew, if you only knew that it was actually releasing angels, if you only knew that it was actually releasing angels and creating change in the spiritual world and the physical realm to change your life, why wouldn't you just do it? Oh, come on, y'all. Just do it. Just speak the word over your life. Speak the word over your marriage. Speak the word over your home. If you've been looking at buying a home, speak the word. My God, decrees change your beliefs. See, because what you believe about yourself, what you believe about the world and your circumstances creates your reality. Mm -hmm. You create what you believe, not anybody else, you. You create what you believe. Your beliefs control how you perceive life. Yes, God, hallelujah. How you react to life, how you react to situations, what you think about yourself all in your belief system, right? Whatever your life is now is based upon your beliefs driving your actions and reactions. This is why I released declarations and I said, how I, re how I act and react to finances will be changed. Will be changed, hallelujah. We are all perceiving this life completely different right now based on the filter of our unique beliefs, based on our life codes, based on our experiences, based on how we were reared, right? We're, that's how we're perceiving life. We need to reprogram our beliefs. Y'all know how it is. Sometimes you got to press control, alt, delete, and you got to hit the task button and see what's taking up so much energy. What's taking up? So why is it running? Why is the computer running so slow? Sometimes you got to reprogram the garage because you didn't gave the code to somebody and y'all done fell out. You got to reprogram some things. We need to reprogram our life. We need to reprogram it and begin to speak the word of God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. So that our habits change, our personality, our ways of thinking and reacting to life. That's how it happens. And then we can come back into alignment, right, with the word of God and the person we desire to be, the person that he created you to be. Your truest identity is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Daily decrees not only make change in the spiritual realm, they also make change in your mind. They make change in your mind, which then changes your brain and then changes your body and then changes your life. Your whole life can be changed by speaking the word of God. Hallelujah. So here are some decrees that I want you to use daily. This will explain the way Decrees and prayers are used each day. For now, here are a few good ones to start with, okay? My spirit, my soul, and body is blessed. His hand of grace and blessing is with us, and he keeps us, hallelujah, from all harm. The favor of God on my life endures a lifetime and causes my mountains of influence 
and blessing to stand strong. Yes, Lord. I am favored everywhere that I go and in all that I do. His favor opens doors of opportunities that no man can shut. Yeshua HaMashiach is a shield to us every day. Yes, God. All of my needs are met according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. My prayers are powerful and effective according to 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, James 5 and 16. I am blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In my home, in my business, in my career, in my parenting, hallelujah, in my marriage, in my finances, I am the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, in Jesus' mighty name. Those are just a few sample decrees that we can use to really change our world, to change our world. And I don't want you to be shy about it. Decree the word of God. Decree the word of God over your life. It's going to change some things for you. I'm telling you, God told me at the beginning of this week, today is Saturday. God told me uh, on Monday that he was about to release supernatural abundance onto the saints of God. If we would get our systems in ourselves in place and in alignment, that he was going to begin to pour out. But see, some of us need to have a mindset, a mindset shift right? We need to change our mind. We, we need to get in a proper alignment with the word of God, speaking the word over things, right? Speaking the word. And he, that's the scripture he gave me, if anyone's taking notes, is Deuteronomy 8 and 18. Hallelujah. That is the word of the Lord. He wants to bring that to pass. He wants you to know that as long as you remember him, it is he who gives you power to get wealth. That's a decree. You can turn that whole scripture into a decree. It would sound something like this. I will remember the Lord my God, for it is he who gives me power to get wealth so that he may establish his covenant with my fathers as it is this day. Look, turning that type of scripture into a decree, into a declaration, right? And speaking it over your life is powerful, far none. God wants to see you in that space. He wants to be able to let you know it's voice activated. And there is nothing that he won't do to make sure his word comes to pass. Let me tell you this, God honors his word above his name. Oh, it's in the, I said it because I read it. Hallelujah. He honors his word above his name. Oh, yes. Yeshua HaMashiach, uh, Jehovah Elohim, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha. Y'all, we, there are over 500 names of the Lord, but he said, I honor my word above my name. That tells you how much weight he puts on his word. He puts weight on his word. God wants us to go forward. Yes, y'all. He wants you to go forward and take his word and apply it. It's not enough to hear it. It's not enough to, to go to church and sit there and absorb, absorb, absorb. You got all the theory. You got a whole lifetime of theory inside of you. Tonight, I decree and declare that your voice will activate your blessings. Hallelujah. Yes, it's Deuteronomy 8 and 18. Your voice will activate your blessings. Your voice will activate your blessings. Open up your mouth. Everything that you've been going to church all your life with. And even if you just started and you're just tuning into this broadcast and you're saying, Tabitha, I need to know how to decree the word of God over my life. I'm telling you that if you would get in your Bible and literally find a scripture that applies to your life, find a scripture that applies to your situation, God can bring that to pass. He is not slack concerning his promises for you. That's what the Bible teaches us, right? And if he, if he's going to bring his promises to pass and his promises to us are what? Yes, 
and a man. Hallelujah. So we know that, right? We know that beyond a shadow of a doubt. God's promises for Tabitha, God's promises for Gwen, God's promises for Renee, God's promises for Annette, God's promises, hallelujah, for Chanel, for Ella, hallelujah, for Tiffany, God's promises for Melissa are yes and amen. He loves you. He loves for you to bring his word back to him. Bring him in remembrance of his word. See, but the way we bring him to remembrance of him is that we've got to read it for ourselves. If you're not reading the word of God, then let me tell you, it's going to be hard to bring him back into remembrance of something that you haven't consumed. Oh, that's why we got to eat the scrolls. That's why we've got to fully indulge in the word of God, fully indulge in the word, the word. Look, God told the prophets of old to eat the scrolls. It literally meant to, to consume this Bible until it is so embedded and ingrained in you. Consume it. Look, y'all, this Bible, this little flimsy Bible goes in my purse. It goes with me everywhere I go. I know we got apps and all of that stuff, y'all, but just maybe some days uh, my, the phone don't work. Maybe some days something needs to be updated. But this, the word of God shall never fail. And once you get that thing in, inside of you, that word have I hidden on my heart that I might not sin against you, Lord. That's what it has to be. It has to be that power. But that's because I put it in. I put it in. I put time in reading the word. Y'all see, I got notes and stuff. I, the, the papers, they, they not see sometimes if you don't read your word on a, on a regular basis, the pa- they're like, why are you turning me so hard? Because you ain't spent no time in here making them feel comfortable with you turning to them now and again. You need to read your word. It's going to bless your life. You got to read. You got to read the word. They got too many apps. They'll read the scripture for you. Hallelujah. Look, they done made it easy for us, y'all. They done made it so easy that we can just program our phone and it will literally read the Bible. I sent my mom an audible Bible that just reads the word. All she has to do is press play and, and maybe program it to the book or chapter that she wants to hear. And it will read it out loud and it will read it until she stops it. There's we have access. God said access granted. If we will just apply the word of God, he is doing major things. God is about to release the prodigals. I want you all, if you're on this broadcast, to be praying for the lost, praying for the sons and daughters, praying for the lost family members, that they come back home. God is calling home the prodigals. He's calling back the the, the sin sick souls. He wants to heal. He wants to repair. He's breaking up the fallow ground. We've got to be in a position, intercessors. We've got to be in a position, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors, apostles, to pull in, hallelujah, everything that the Lord is releasing. Today, I literally seen the Lord pouring out blessings. He told me he was pouring out blessings, just pouring out. This is the will of the Lord. The will of the Lord. God wants to do that for each and every one of us. And I just believe with my whole heart, with my little radical self, that God will do just what he said. God is able to do just what he said for me and for you. You can trust him. You can take him at his word. Listen, if you are on this broadcast, I thank you for spending some time with me today. I don't take it lightly that when the Lord prompts me to go live, that you come in and spend some time with me. I am just an obedient and faithful servant to do what God said do. And so I want to say this, that God is going to bless you. He's going to bless you for the time that you spent just honoring the word of God. Maybe you're sitting here, maybe you're catching the replay and you're saying, Tabitha, I'm not in the right position. I, you know, I, I backslid, you know, I, I am the prodigal you're talking about. And if that's the case, guess what? You're in the right place. You're in the right place. The Bible says the angels rejoice over one soul coming back. And so let me say this to you. God loves you and there is nothing that he won't do. God will leave the 99 and go after you. Hallelujah. That's good news. So if you would just repeat after me, Lord Jesus, please forgive me of my sins. I was wrong, Lord. I believe that you died on a cross. 
were buried and rose on the third day with all power in your hands. I know that you are risen and in heaven, constantly making intercession for me. Lord, I thank you for your forgiveness. I will walk in your word and in your will in Jesus name. Listen, Romans 10, 9 and 10 says this that if you confess with your mouth and believe with your heart, then you shall be saved. That Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior, then you shall be saved. And so that's all you have to do to come back into right standing. Again, we are rejoicing. If you just said that, please mark it down in the comments. Please let me know. I'm excited to hear your testimony because God is saving. God is turning us back. He wants us to come back to his loving embrace. This is the will of God for us to be in a position to have full fellowship with him, right? He never wanted to be out of fellowship with you. So here we are today, and I just bless you right now that you will continue to walk in the word of God. I love you all so much. You know, again, the angels rejoice over one soul. And so welcome to the body of Christ. Welcome to the family of believers in Jesus Christ. We welcome you. We love you. God bless you and keep you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Have a wonderful day, saints. I'm so glad I could see you tonight, and we will talk soon. Again, like, share, and subscribe this video. Subscribe to this video. Turn on the bell for notifications when I go live so that you don't miss me. Um, and so that I don't miss you. I love you all so much. Have a good night.